Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our third webinar today. Uh, I'm Radek Michalik, Managing Director of uh, Composite, and with me is Ola. Hello. Uh, we are going to go through our webinar together with you today. We are planning to have an hour uh, webinar um, where we are we are going to cover 3D composite frame design uh, based on, on examples and our software capabilities. Um, as always, please feel free to ask your questions. You can find the, the chat and question panels in your uh, webinar um, uh, user, user form box. Um, of course, we are going to uh, review those questions and answer them at the end of the webinar. Um, the webinar is also recorded and is going to be available after the webinar on our website uh, in our uh, training and support section. Um, you are going to receive email with all the details after the webinar. All right, so let's start our webinar. Oops. Okay. The objectives of, of this webinar is to present you a practical example of composite frame design using com composite capabilities. We also want to um, take this opportunity to introduce to integrated composite workflows and present efficiency gains that you can gain through simplification and automation, which have been uh, part of the composite design. Um, we are going to concentrate on the on the on the frame design based on the on the real life examples. We are going to show you um, we are going to show you um, the examples from industry. Um, then we are going to go to a live demonstration where we are going to present uh, design of the frame, uh, concentrating on, on, on the efficiency and design iterations and producing the documentation and uh, outcome of and, and deliverables of, of such a design. At the end of the webinar, we are going to concentrate or um, we'll, we are going to provide you answers to the questions which you are going to post at the end of the webinar. So let's start with the first point. We want to um, touch a little bit the why composite subjects and so it's clear to, to, to you and uh, we reiterate why we think composite is a, is a, is a great solution. Um, at the beginning, when, when uh, we were thinking about putting software or uh, finding a software solution for, uh, for composite industry, we found that there, there is a clear gap with the currently available tool sets, um, which it makes it very difficult to convert the, the, the design idea into the well-developed product. Uh, the process in between is quite tedious and there's not that lot, lot of tools which are seeming, seamlessly integrated and provide uh, the efficiency which is needed at this stage of the, of the design process. So we, we thought, okay, let's, let's do composite, composite and, and provide this um, and fill this gap in the market. So this is exactly what we are trying to address with, the, with composite software. There are six reasons. Uh, there are six reasons uh, which makes this solution, composite solution, unique and provides the functionality which are not available. And we're going quickly to go through the, these um, um, uh, one by one. The first one is flexible, li flexible licensing. Um, composite is quite unique in this sense. It's uh, based on the, on the, on the formula of software as a service um, uh, model, which basically is a, it's a model which allows very, very flexible licensing models, providing a subscription and usage-based um, uh, licensing for all the functionalities and features that are uh, provided with this, within this platform. A uh, lot of features are included in, in subscription. Some of the features which are high, highly added values or require, which require um, a, uh, comput computational resources are charged with uh, additional units which are part of your subscription, monthly subscription um, uh, pool of units. Um, one element which is quite different and unique is that there's no license per uh, user um, approach. You can have as many users as you like. By adding users, you can, you can build up your um, uh, flexibility and scalability of, of, this, of this solution. Um, next, next factor, which is uh, which is quite unique, is that this tool has been produced 
with focus on the composite design. So basically, it provides all the functionalities which allows to handle composite design in an efficient way. It doesn't mean it's only composite oriented. You can design and, and handle different materials as well, including metals. So it's, it's quite flexible, but the, the architecture and the, and the way that, that information is passed in the, in the inside and stored is, is very, very much focused on composites. Next one is the centralized data management, uh, which is the inherited uh, inherited consequence of the of the web-based uh, platform. All data is centralized; it's it's stored on secured and um, and dedicated uh, infrastructure on, on, on cloud, um, with data being being uh, only in one place and on, always consistent. So this allows to to maintain quality and um, and um, and um, and freedom to exchange data within your uh, design team. Okay. The next one is the fourth element is agile workflows. So you are going to see today um, this in practice when we are going to work on the practical example of the design. We allow to um, to design um, with with great flexibility with ability to change the des decisions on the design inputs at any point of the design. We're going to present this with, with an example of the frame design today. The fifth one is the um, automated documentation. We all know how much time is, is needed for producing the documentation. And part of the uh, uh, simplification and automation of the processes and uh, uh, and the gain of, of the efficiency was concentrated on providing automated documentation. We produced the uh, do documentation as an automated output from, from the platform, providing the uh, issues and the revision control and, uh, and documentation with one click, basically. The sixth one is the collaboration and integration. Based on the web-based solution, uh, this platform provides a fantastic uh, platform for collaboration, not only internally, but also externally. You can bring external users uh, from outside. You can access your, all your data from where, wherever you are, just having an internet access. This brings quite outstanding and uh, unique uh, element of this, of this uh, platform. Okay, we'll go to the next part of our um, um, webinar. We are going to show you a few industrial examples um, which are related to the frame design. We are going to show you what could, could be done and this gives you a good comprehension of, of uh, what Composite can, can provide. The first one is the set of marine examples of marine structures which have been simplified to and the, the beam design, frame design approach was used to, to analyze and provide the, the answers to, uh, the, uh, to the design requirements. So on the left hand side you can see quite, com uh, quite com complex uh, mass bulkhead structure designed by, uh, by Structing uh, using uh, approximation of the beam design. You can see that there is a 3D, three dimensional approximation of the structure with different beams which are linked and supported uh, in, a, in a 3D model. Um, this gives pretty good uh, representation of the, of, the, of the design problem. On the right-hand side, there is a preliminary design of a C-class catamaran, which uh, the frame and beam design approach have been uh, used. Uh, it was the work done also by Structing as part of a preliminary study of, the, of this type of the vessel. Next one is the industrial example. Those are the examples of the structures designed in composite and built by Baltic yachts. Um, on the left hand side, uh, there's a, an example of, of uh, main street bulkhead uh, design with uh, interact, inter interacting elements of the structure of the hull and, and deck structure. You can see there's a quite, uh, quite comprehensive set of uh, structural elements which are interlinked together. On the, on the right-hand right side, there is an example of the uh, engine girder uh, design uh, example where support for the, the engines have been designed. From the other part of the market with the renewable uh, market, this is the example of 
uh, of vert vertical axis wind turbine designed by X Power with uh, help from composite uh, um, uh, software. Um, the software has been used successfully on this, during this design, allowing cutting quite significantly time uh, needed for iterations and uh, and quite um, quite a lot of changes in the in the this complex design. There's another example of the of using the beam and frame design. This is a simple uh, civil example of the bridge design. So you can see that there is a cross section, comprehensive design of a cross section done in the in one part of our platform, and then the beam model is used for for very preliminary estimation of the of the stiffness and uh, natural frequencies of the of such a bridge. Another example is the industrial example based on the bicycle frame. This example has been done as a part of our, our tutorials. You can find the details of this design on our, on our YouTube channel. We encourage you to, to, to sub subscribe and to look for, for the tutorials there. And so this, this example shows, um, shows the example of a bike, um, bicycle frame design. Okay, before we, we go to the next part of our uh, webinar, we'd like to go through through the modules and workflows which, which are, we are going to use, so it's clear to you to understand what we are going to do in the, in the live demo. Um, as a start, I would like to show you this, this matrix which shows what areas of the composite product lifecycle uh, composite can cover. Uh, there's quite uh, quite broad um, broad um, range of the of the functionalities which we have, which can support uh, almost any point of a life life cycle of the product. But today we are going to concentrate on the preliminary design, which basically covers the design uh, simplified design of the f of, of the of the frame structure. The workflows which are used, uh, we mentioned something about agile workflows. So we have uh, multiple modules which are responsible for handling different elements of the design process. And they're interlinked, uh, seamlessly interlinked. And you can switch from one to the other at any point of your design process, doing a downstream design and upstream modification, which can propagate to, to, the des to, to any point of the, of the design stage. Um, okay, now I think we are going to uh, go to the live demonstration, which is going to present uh, the iteration of the design of the kill structure of, of the of the yacht uh, of 60 foot yacht. We selected this design because it's it's a quite a good example of of, of um, quite complex structure, which is simplified by the beam beam design. Okay. okay, so our challenge for today is to design a kill grillage for a 60-footer, as Radek mentioned. Uh, we already have the 3D model um, here, um, and we took um, just the kill structure that we will be concentrating mm -hmm. on. But um, our aim is not only to design it, but also to deliver a laminate table for the engineering drawing and also a full bill of material report including all material quantities and cost. Mm -hmm. Okay, as for the design. Um, okay. <laughs> as for the design requirements, yeah. um, obviously we, as Ola mentioned, we started with a 3D model which allows us to define the envelopes, geometrical envelopes which are used then to define the, the depth of the beams and so on. But uh, other requirements are um, we need to design the, the kill structure to comply with certain certification rules. We, we've chosen only a few, few load cases from those rules to show you how you can handle multiple load cases. And the brief is very simple. We need to minimize cost and meet performance and strength requirements uh, driven by those, those rules. Um, um, as so an input to, to the design requirements, it has been um, decided that uh, two options are going to be um, evaluated. One full carbon prepack version of the structure, and then we are going to uh, uh, check the hybrid design uh, using s certain reduction of the cost element if the, when using the, the, the inf infused webs with the in-glass materials. Okay, 
So now we can move on to composite and we will start with our um, composite material database. During this uh, live demonstration, we are going to revert to, to this uh, graph of, the, of our modules and workflows, so it's clear to you where we are and what stage of the design we are. Ola is logging in into our platform using just standard web browser. Um, um, now the, the environment is, is loading. Um, before, before the webinar, we've prepared certain elements of this, this um, presentation, so we set up the project. Exactly. And also, Ola is now going into the uh, central material database where the material data have been prepared as well for you. If you're interested in the material data, we are planning and how to handle those things in, in Composite and how easy it is and convenient, please join us for the next webinar, which is going to run in a couple of weeks. Um, where we are going to concentrate on the material data management in our platform. Exactly, on material data management, mm -hmm. on creating new materials. We will explain it all in just a few weeks. Okay, so we are ready to go to our uh, classic laminate theory tool, Lamina Space. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So Ola is uh, just switching seamlessly to the next module, which, which is our uh, laminate modeler tool. And exactly. we've already prepared certain laminates for our design because uh, this is what uh, will make this example quite uh, more efficient. You might ask how you did it and how you do it. It's just based on the, on the, uh, on, on the only experience or on, on your preliminary design based on your, on your knowledge of the loads and size of the loads. So we've created it uh, as a starting point for our, our design and we're going to go through this uh, from, from this point on. Exactly. That's why we are already <laughs> ready to move to section space, our mm -hmm. tool for section design. So we are going to reuse them. We, we use materials, we build laminates. Now we are going to use the example of the, of the beam section. As you can see, we are in the beam section. Ola has switched to the new, next module. And she is creating a new, new section example to show you how this can be done efficiently. As you can see, we have all uh, other sections uh, prepared for the further model uh, preparation. But now we are going to show you how quickly you can do the section design. Exactly. I more or less know what I want for my design. That's why I will mm -hmm. uh, design a simple Elfland section using our uh, template. So, so we Elfland. There's an incorporated wizard to create a, a geometry for your beams with some basic and most commonly used sections. Oh, I have used Elfland uh, example. As you can see, the geometry has been created with uh, some constraints and dimensions which can be easily uh, used to change the section. Exactly what I'm doing now. Now I'm attaching a laminate that, that we've created in lamina space to the geometrical elements. So Ola has allocated the, the web laminate to the web elements and now she's adding the simple material for the cupping. Exactly about 30 times. So as you can see, you can either use material or laminates if there's, a, there's flexibility on how you approach it or mix all the laminates or materials. Exactly. Here I have a, a hull laminate, yeah. And that's going to be my plating. Plating means that this is element is not going to be used in our bill of material module. It's treated as a supporting supported structure and it's not treated as an element to, to count the material for. Okay, we have our section properties, we can work on them. Mm -hmm. We can also check the allowable loads of the section. Allowable loads is a, it's a load capacity of such a, such a beam, so Ola is checking capacity for, for bending moment uh, uh, for this section, so she knows what to expect from this section and what, what kind of load this section can take. Exactly. Uh, Ola has, has calculated uh, reserve factors, which is one for this uh, allowable load, which is basically showing you, uh, this is spot on, this is exactly how much this beam could take in bending. 
And you can use section space to preliminary design your beams. So if you know your internal forces, like shear forces or bending moments, you can apply them and check whether your section um, fulfills this uh, this requirements, and then reuse the section further down in the in the in FE space, which I'm going to show you in in a, in a moment, exactly. to to check whether your assumptions of simplified uh, loads were correct. Okay, so. Once we are ready with our sections, we can move on to every space. Mm -hmm. But before we do, um, we're going to say a few words how we, um, <laughs> how we got the model. We simplified our 3D design and exported it as a DXF file. So, so 3D, 3D model have been simplified to, to, uh, to, to lines which are lying on the same, same plane and they are basically converted into the DXF uh, file, which can be imported to, to our platform. Okay. Uh, it's quite comprehensive. Ola is going to, to show you how to do it. We have quite comprehensive uh, importing model uh, module, which is allowing you to handle geometry using layers and, and uh, being able to group the elements within. Okay. Let me just simply... Um switch to our browser. <laughs> okay. Okay. So Ola is switching to Effie space and now she's importing, oh no, she's, <laughs> she's creating a new model, some example model. Yeah. Uh, which is our Effie, Effie uh, model. Okay. As soon as it loads, I'm going to import the DXF file. Okay, uh, first I'm going to create a sketch on a plane to import the lines onto the sketch. Okay. We've prepared the file uh, prior to the, the webinar, so she, she uh, allows importing the, the pre prepared file. You can see that there are layers which we can import or not. We can uh, then uh, create or steer or, or control how the elements are grouped. So Ola is going to show you the groups in a minute and um, exactly. the elements. So they are they are nicely organized. So you can you can convert them into the structural elements. Okay. Yeah. Now we are going to show you how quickly to use the section which we've done in section space exactly. in, this, in this model. Lines are not what we were after, so we're gonna import the section we have just created. Mm -hmm. Okay. And now I'm going to simply create a beam using that section. So Ola is selecting by um, uh, creating the, or no, well, taking the group and uh, selecting the geometrical elements and then basically telling that those geometrical elements are going to create a beam with such a section properties. Yes, of course I would have to work on the orientation of the beam, um, but I can also very easily do that for all the lines. Yeah. So th this is uh, basically the next step when you prepare your model, making sure that you know, your beams are oriented the way they, they should be. I encourage you to, uh, to, to watch our tutorials. We have quite a few of them to, to cover this topic. We'd like to concentrate on, like, on a different element of the design process today. We want to really want to show you how to uh, quickly extract the data and deliver the, the end results instead of uh, concentrating how to, do, how to model the, the problem. So we switched to the model which have been already pre-processed. Pre so Ola spent some time to create the section and uh, building the model, restraining it, building the cases which were part of the re design requirements. Yes, so we, we have, have load cases. Two load cases. Grounding and lockdown. Mm -hmm. Those load cases have some safety factors incorporated in the loads and so on. So there are, there are elements which you can uh, you can do to define easy in an easier and, and consistent and efficient way. In your in your model build uh, building phase. But at the moment, what we want to do, we want to show you how quickly we can check the, the strength of that by just running this this model. So Ola has just shown showing you that uh, we run the model. This shows us the, the formation of the of the knockdown uh, load case and and the grounding and, the, and the grounding. Now we've mentioned about uh, something about um, running the, the, the analysis and uh, and certain uh, resources being used. So Ola is going to show you that um, there's a way to check how much uh, certain operations uh, might might cost you if if there is a uh, if there is a 
charge needed for the for these and yes uh, i'm gonna do it uh during the second iteration because i've already okay. <laughs> calculated the uh, strength analysis for the grounding uh, load case and as we can see we are spot on mm -hmm. You might uh, think, okay, they, they prepared mm -hmm. it and it's so easy. Uh, of course, there, there will be few iterations, but um, even with uh, with starting this this uh, design from scratch, it's quite efficient to, to get to this point that you can optimize your design for certain load cases. So, of course, we pre-prepare pre it before the, the webinar uh, just to consider on slightly different things. So, now we, we know that our design is, is working, so we can produce um, other elements of the of the design. So we are going to fill of material yeah. generation tool. Okay. So I switch into this module, and uh, of course we 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 see that um, there's a charge related to the generating bill of material, and it's one of charge for for you to create it and. This is what happens now. That bill of material from this particular model has been created. Um, all the sub sub items which have been defined as a, as a structural groups, which have been selected to go into bill of material, are brought into the bill of material, and the material quantities and weights are summarized in the table. So you can you can see how much material and how much it costs and how much it weighs. Okay, but the uh, frames, it's a way of uh, simplifying our structures. Mm -hmm. That's why um, probably would like to add some manual elements, and that's why we're going to add a bonding. Mm -hmm. the, the, the frame design uh, module doesn't give you, well, it's simplified approach, so of course we didn't design the bonding, but you can add them manually by, by defining manual elements. The same way you can modify a certain um, bill of material um, definitions like areas, lands, and uh, extent of certain plies uh, by manual overwriting the, the automatic uh, quantities which have been brought from a fee model. Okay. We are going to we are going to um, uh, host another webinar um, after material design uh, or material management webinar, which is going to concentrate on on the bill of material handling. So please. Uh, feel free to sign for it to learn how to use bill of material efficiently. Okay, so I'm simply adding three biaxial plies and a fillet mm -hmm. of a radius 15 millimeters, yes. As you can see, the, the material definite, material data is, is used at any point of, of the design, so you can add it even at this point and, or change it at this point. Um, at the moment, the bonding has been added and this table where you have a bill of material quantities have been altered where the bonding quantities materials have been added. so you can estimate the cost and, and the quantities okay and now if we are happy with our bill of material we can um, simply create a report mm -hmm. this is part of this automatic automatization of the, the documentation to, to basically uh, streamline and, and made this process efficient, as, as, as we can see. Yeah, I'm just right-clicking on the product and clicking Create Bond and Report. Mm. You can select what type of uh, bill of material report you want. Uh, you can see what elements are included and what level of, of bill of material you want to, to have. And at the moment, uh, we are going to do the full bill of material with all components and costs included. Exactly. I've unticked the create uh, automatic P1 issue because I want to make uh, the report a little bit more appealing. I'm mm -hmm. going to add a picture. So this shows you that you can add, still edit your report. There's certain elements which comes from, from a database, but uh, the content can be altered. You can add your descriptions, you can add your assumptions, pictures, or anything else that is, uh, is required to make this report meaningful for, for, for you or your, for, for your customers or managers. Um, this allows you to, to, um, to quite uh, easily provide the documentation which is of value to, to your project. Exactly. If your 
report is approved by your project manager. Mm -hmm. And Radek, do you approve? Yes, let, let's uh, <laughs> issue. I, we will going. We are going to issue as P1, so preliminary. Yeah. So you can see we handled uh, revision and issue control. So now I've approved it. I'm, I'm going to um, always doing it. Normally I can log it as, as myself and, and approve it as me. Um, but Ola has done it for, to keep it uh, efficient. So we issued this, this report as P1. We can now share a link to the report with uh, anyone, <laughs> or we can simply generate a PDF file from mm -hmm. the report. Of course, all people who have access to the project can come and uh, review the reports or generate reports. You can send the link to anyone who, who is in your um, in your project uh, team, but no, don't have uh, access to the composite, not necessarily have access to composite. Um, so there's a certain flexibility on to how to handle the documentation. But okay. <laughs> I, I have to say, I, we need to really push harder and try the other option because... Yeah, exactly. I, I can see, you don't see Radek's face, but he's not very happy with the price of the materials no, so we used. Let's see. <laughs> Before we jump into this, maybe this is a good, a good time to, um, to see how you can use this data. Just looking at this bill of material um, uh, table, you can see that quite a significant cost of this, uh, of this design is, sits in the, in the, in the biaxial material, which is part of our, our web, uh, webs. So it's almost, almost a half of the, of the cost. So, we decided that uh, in the, so next iteration, we are going to go back and change design of our beams. So we're going back to lamina, and we we'll, are going to replace the carbon biaxial webs with uh, glass-infused webs, which are uh, much more cost-effective. Okay. Okay. Again, you can go back also to, uh, as a part of this process of iterating, even to lamina, to uh, material database and, and, and derive the quantities that needs to be used to replace certain materials. Um, as I said, I encourage you to join our next webinar. This is where we are going to show you how to do it. But uh, based on, on, on material data, we know that there's a factor of two points, around 2.8. To, uh, to convert from one material to the other. So the quantities need to be 2.8 times more for the new material. And we are going to use this factor to modify our, our current laminates used in the webs. Okay, going back to lamina, I'm gonna simply duplicate uh, my uh, laminate family. If I wanna go back to the full carbon design, I will be able to do it easily. Okay, let's just say that will be glass. Mm -hmm. uh, Very okay. easy to duplicate, to, to modify and to, to reuse certain data. You can copy also part of a project. It's quite quite efficient to, to reuse what you've already done. Okay, so I'm going to edit this. So we have six material. plies. Uh, Ola is going to change the material first to the glass layer. So you can see this is quite easy. We are using symmetry, so we don't need to... Uh, worry about the other part of the layup. And now we, we're duplicating, so we have, uh, we need to convert it to 16 plies. Exactly, so one more duplication. Yes. Let's, let's compress them so we, we can see whether there are 16 plies. Yeah, we have a total of 16 plies, and of course we have two different laminates which are used in a different part of the beams. Um, um, okay. Mm -hmm. Let's wait for the lamina to save. Okay, so we can go safe. to section space. And now we we are going to show you examples of replacing this laminate only for one one beam in a, in a, in a, in a grid. So it's it's easier for us to do and quicker. But you can push it further and potentially change it everywhere, or change in in different ways, different elements of your structure. So all I selected. Um, uh, um, mid twin longitudinal section, which is used in the way of the keel for the longitudinals, and she's going to change the web laminate. So okay. she's removing That's... the old laminate and adding the new laminate, which is part of the the duplicated laminate. So you can see okay. we have different uh, laminate. The thickness has changed. 
Um, this section is now saved and, and we are going to go back to FE, FE space to check whether the R model meets the design, still design criteria for those two load cases that we are checking. Okay, I'm going to firstly also change it in the mm -hmm. twin longitudinal section. So what we are doing, we are replacing material for all the longitudinal, twin longitudinals in the middle of the kill structure. Yes, exactly. Again, it's very easy to do. As a part of, of this design process, you could change your geometry. You can see that you can very easily change your geometry by changing uh, uh, constrain, uh, constraints which are used in the section design and so on. You can really, really play with it and, and see the consequences of your change. Again, I don't need this laminate family anymore. I'm going to use this one. OK. The design is design in most places is based on the ply based design so you can you can steer with selection of the plies which plies are going to be used in your design and this gives quite a good uh, flexibility in, in changing and adopting your your, your design and at the moment we are loading the the, the structure in in a fee model and yeah. Always regenerating mesh just to make sure that uh, all the sections have been regenerated. Uh, that the changes that we've done to the sections are already in the model. Now we are we need to recalculate the model by just uh, okay. Just it. as promised, you can um, see how many composite units will be uh, taken from your subscription. It's twelve for those two load cases. I'm very happy with that. So mm -hmm. I'm gonna calculate. It's all. It's very transparent. At any action which is which needs uh, composite units, and they they are going to you are going to find the sign of the composite units, and you can click and and before you commit to anything, you can check your the, the, the potential cost of your of your run. The cost is driven by the complexity of your models and by the by the added value of some of the actions. So. Um, you are going to see, or we've already seen in several places where we, we use this uh, approach. Um, composite, okay, composite units are, are added as part of your subscription, so you have a pool of units that you can use. At any point, you can top up uh, if you need more, if you're adding more people, or you have a more intensive period of your, of, of your design, you can, you can top up. Um, exactly. At the moment, we are waiting for tasks to be calculated. Um, it's it's uh, taking a bit more time because the, the, the work has just been started. Yes. Uh, That's because we are on our demo environment. Don't worry about that. <laughs> yes, normally it takes uh, only a few seconds to, to run. Yeah. Um, as you can see, now it's starting running. It's uh, done now. Okay, so basically yeah. it's coming back. And we have a results instantly after that, and always checking the displacement. Displacement are, are right. We we know that uh, uh, we can check one more thing. Maybe it's uh, worth uh, mentioning. You can check the internal forces and moments, which are then used in the section design. You can bring them into the section design if you need to alter your section design. Um, this is the example of the graph of your of your of your moments. Okay, mm -hmm. but we are interested in the um, strength analysis for the grounding. We know that grounding is the critical load case, so Ola again is, is able to check how much it will cost her to run one load case for the strength analysis is 10 units. Uh, okay. And uh, now we are running the strength analysis for this particular load case. Now okay. we are selecting what type of failure we want to check and, and again we can see that our scaling worked. <laughs> uh, we are still yeah, close to one on. but uh, the scaling that we derived in CMDB worked. This confirms that everything is okay. So at the moment we, we know that design meets the design criteria so we are going to produce again very quickly or update the bill of material and report and this will take just a matter of few few minutes. Okay. Going to BOM, we, update. We are updating BOM and now it basically updates our current, uh, the BOM with the current design. Oh, um, looks better now. Yeah, it looks better. Mm -hmm. We saved around 500 uh, euros on this change simply on those two launch models. Uh, 
Yeah. Um, so this is, the, and, and you can see how quickly you can check the, the, the influence of such such a design uh, decisions. Okay, we could create just another report, but um, I'm going to simply create another revision of mm -hmm. the report that already exists here. Ola has just take the refresh all dynamic data, which means that she she is going to bring the new data from the database. You can and this is this uh, this modification is a new revision. You can have, this is major major revision. You have a minor revision where you just add text and other things, and this is basically you can do at any point when you edit your your report. The major revision and issues are basically uh, requiring some units. Okay, all the new data was taken in. Perfect. If our manager is happy now, we can, of issue, course, issue, issue it. Issue as a P1 or even A, um, because we know that we've targeted certain costs uh, issues and we know that the design is, is meeting the criteria. Of course, this is only the example. You would work probably a little bit more on, on your bill of material, adjusting it to make it more realistic with uh, adapting areas of your beams to the real areas and so on. But this is just to show you how quickly you can do the first estimate of the influence of the design of the design decisions and changes on your full cycle of the design. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But that's not all. We've been also asked to um, generate a laminate table for our engineering drawing. So that's why we are going back to BombGen. So we, we can produce um, at any point of your design, you can produce the material tables, you can produce laminate tables, and once you have a bill of material, you can produce the component definition tables. So you can produce the laminate tables per components with bill of material there in, uh, included. So all I again, it's very simple. I right clicked on the chosen component. I'm gonna export a laminate table. Okay, you okay. can see that we we exported it to to formatted Excel file, which uh, allows you to um, to maintain the quality and the, the format of your of your data. So all I is just bringing this Excel into here. Uh, if you have more components, you can navigate through the con title of content. But in here, you can see that we have a beam table, which gives you the layout definition, quantities, weights, and so on. Okay. You can copy this, uh, and and we are going to show you that uh, this is the drawing of the kill structure, and all I is going to Paste this table special. as a as a picture or into the drawing. So you can imagine okay. that the, at the first point we, we did the same thing. So all I can just replace the same table. Uh, it will have a consistent data. You don't have to worry whether numbers are right, quantities are right. Everything is consistent and straight from the design environment. Okay. So Ola is, is just produced everything what we've just been asked at the beginning. We have a bill of material done, we've iterated, we, have, we know the consequence of our decisions, we have uh, two reports, and we have a drawing with the final uh, table we've done. So this concludes basically our, our design, and uh, this is the design comparison. Uh, we've saved through this exercise around 12% of the cost, uh, just only on those sing single beam uh, shoe web material replacement by adding 24% of weight to the, to the structure. Of course, simplified structure, but it gives the, the, the feeling of how much the compromise you need to make, either in cost uh, or, or, or weight. Okay. Yeah, again, we've met all the design requirements and we've uh, delivered what we were expected. Mm -hmm. Through this example, we hope that we show you um, how efficient and how, how agile your design process can be and how quickly and efficiently you can produce and simplify it, uh, certain steps of your design. Um, we've, we've been very transparent with you from the very beginning about the cost of running such a design and we want to show you the, the summary of, of, the, of the cost which have been associated with this. We've taken into account several more iterations in the design, which we haven't shown during this uh, presentation, but this is an uh, estimated cost of, of such an iteration. So it's, you can see that there are certain things which are not charged with, uh, with the units or don't, uh, don't require units, but overall design costed around 140 units. Um, we provided uh, two off-the-shelf uh, uh, 
plans which have their monthly subscription pull off units included. So, first plan is the CU1000, so you could uh, do, do a little bit less uh, designs like that. It's more de um, dedicated to the people who, who are not um, heavy FE users. But if, if you are thinking that you are going to do similar things that we were doing and push it even more, there's another, other, another plan with um, 8,000 units per month, which basically allows you to do quite, quite a few designs and iterations as, as we did. Okay. Tangible benefits. Um, I hope it was clear that we we showed improve efficiency and uh, and um, quite significant improvement in the decision making process, both for engineers and project managers, and maybe also end, end users and clients. Um, we believe that this give, this platform gives this comprehension of both the design and design decisions and cost and commercial decisions to. Um, to all the stakeholders of the projects. With this very simple design process within a given time of less than an hour, we managed to save 500 uh, uh, euros cost of the materials, not, not saying about uh, the labor cost, this is not, not, uh, not included, but I'm, I'm sure that we could push it more to, to save it even more. Um, we need to really also mention that there is quite a lot of cost saved in terms of time for engineering and reviewing and, uh, and quality control. Um, and again, the quality improvements and consistency of the data and deliverables is, is just self-explanatory, I hope. <laughs> so thank you very much. I think this is the concluding our, our webinar as such. We have uh, two we have a few questions from you, yeah. um, so we will try to answer some of them now. And if we didn't manage to pick all of them or we missed something, we um, I, I, I can assure that we are going to send you the, the answers after the webinar. Okay, the first question is a very important one. Uh, is the area in the bomb based on the imported geometry or from the simplified geometry in EpiSpace? We should have probably mentioned that um, all the quantities are taken from the EFI model and the mesh of the FE model. And of course, uh, going further to the section space to, to get all the measurements of the section, uh, the width of the uh, elements. Of course, as, as we mentioned, um, you can alter this, you can modify this based on your real geometry. This is, this is easily, um, uh, easily done. But as, as we also mentioned, we are going to show how to manage your bomb uh, in the next webinar, which is going to be the, our fifth webinar in, in a few weeks' time. Okay. Next one. Uh, can you adjust the section stiffness along its span to represent varying depth? At the moment, we only handle uh, constant section beams. We don't uh, support uh, any other model of the beams, although you could uh, model your, this, your beams with uh, slightly better uh, better approximation by just splitting your beam into and using different sections. It could be easily implemented by just copying and duplicating sections and changing the geometry and definitions and then applying different section properties to the different part of your beams. But this is uh, the question is always on the engineering, uh, engineering simplifications and assumptions. It's, uh, it's up to engineer how much, how detailed you want to to model your structure and how much it influences your results. Okay, there is a kind of a question, um, is it possible to get this presentation emailed? Uh, the presentation will be available on the website mm -hmm. and you'll get all the info shortly. Just to maybe mention on this, we, um, we have our website uh, which is support and training page and after this webinar the, the presentation is going to be available from this uh, the, from this page also with other other materials from this uh, webinar such as reports and, and example files you can find there also other things like tutorials and uh, knowledge base which we hope it's useful for you to uh, to get familiar with with composite and and it's a good step for for introducing your, yourself to to the to the software Okay, another very important question. Do you have shell modeling capability in Composite or is it just limited to beam modeling? Mm -hmm. 
Um, of course, we have uh, shell modeling uh, capabilities. There was um, uh, one webinar, which was webinar number two, which is available also from our website, which was dedicated to design of the panels and uh, uh, modeling shell structures. Uh, I would say even more. We 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 can design beams and uh, we can design a mix of beams and shells together with using the beams uh, simplification of the local reinforcement, for instance, or support for the shell models. So yes, to cut it short, we support shell modeling as well. Okay. Um, is there any way to treat buckling or fatigue analysis? Uh, yes uh, and no. Uh, <laughs> we uh, we support buckling, uh, linear buckling uh, for beam uh, beam models as well. Uh, having said that, this uh, this is simplified oil. Well, it's, simplified. it's Euler buckling for global buckling behavior. We don't uh, track the beam. Components or beam elements buckling, like uh, you know, compressed uh, part of the of the beams. So this needs to be checked uh, with a little bit different approach using shells or or simplified hand calculations. Um, in regards to to the fatigue, at the moment we don't support fatigue calculations, but it depends on what methods uh, of the fatigue calculation you use. You potentially could use certain functionalities of of FE space to to derive. Uh, critical strains and so on. Um, so and just to mention, we also support model analysis. <laughs> exactly, we support model analysis with also with pretension. Exactly. Um, okay, um, <laughs> have you benchmarked the results even for complex beams? Uh, I have to say this is uh, this is something with which we treat seriously. We we benchmark our um, our calculations at every point. We 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 do the, the development, but also um, uh, introducing introducing um, uh, changes to the software. We we benchmark it against the first principle calculation and also to, um, with a fee, mo fee modeling. So we, we treat it very seriously, and um, I can re reassure you that yes, we benchmark all the results. Okay. I think I think we've most covered most of the questions. If we miss anything, we are really sorry. But uh, as I said, we are going to send the answers to you directly after after the webinar. Okay. Okay. Just to conclude um, uh, our webinar, I want to also mention one more thing, which how you want to how you can get the support when you are going to use Composite. You can when, once you have access to Composite, of course, by accessing it through your account, uh, either at trial stage or commercial stage, you can reach us at any point with, with through integrated uh, channels of support. You can use simple email address, which is support at composite.com, or you can uh, reach us through the chat, integrated chat, which is uh, um, part of our our platform. Uh, we provide the technical documentation as part of the platform, which explains the elements of the of the um, of our uh, software, and we have quite rich YouTube channel with tutorials which addresses certain things related to modules and overall uh, workflows and how to work efficiently with Composite. Um, um, this is uh, we know that support is really important, and we 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 want to support you guys and uh, make sure that you 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 can use the software efficiently. Okay. Just to conclude, we we welcome you to to sign up for free trial. Our free trial, exactly. We provide 30 days free trial, and uh, this is quite um, convenient to to start your experience uh, with with composite uh, please sign in just go into our website and and sign in it takes only a few seconds to do um, after this uh, trial which allows you to evaluate complete functionality of, of composite with all functions um, for you for you there to use we provide uh, the, the, the limited number of units so you can have a good feeling of how much units you would use in your typical projects um, there are two off-the-shelf uh, plans which you can select after after that, and if you are after certain other solutions, we are ready to 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 discuss. Please get in touch with us, and we are we are happy to, to develop an enterprise solution as well. Okay. I think that concludes our webinar for today. We hope that you enjoyed it. Um, I think we are on time and. 
Um, uh, we are, as we said, we, we are welcoming to, to sign in for, for the new web, web webinars. Uh, the new webinars are going to be announced uh, soon. You can find the details on our website and register for them uh, there as well. So thank you very much for your time today and we hope you enjoy this webinar. Yeah, thank you. Bye.